Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm from BJU Press and I'm one of the writers that worked on this book, Biology 5th Edition, and I want to tell you a little bit about this book so you can see how Biology 5th Edition helps your child develop a biblical worldview, have sound education, and experience the joy of learning science. So let's take a look at how this starts on the very first page. You see a picture here of a 20-week-old baby. And this opener here is talking about abortion and a woman who's considering an abortion. So you can see from the very beginning, we're talking about issues and how they relate to both the biblical worldview and to biology. And we're going to talk about lots of issues in biology to help try to shape your student's worldview. And that will come across in the questions, the key questions at the beginning of the, the section that are linked with objectives in the teacher's edition. And beside objectives in the teacher's edition that relate to worldview shaping, there'll be a little icon that says BI, and that stands for Biblical Integration. And these objectives form the core of the content and also the assessments, the questions, and in the section and chapter reviews, and on the tests. So again, at the very core, we're really trying to shape your student's worldview to be a biblical one. And we're going to be addressing lots of issues in biology. Let's take a look at some of them. One of the biggest ones will be evolution. And we have a whole chapter on evolution. And the goal of this chapter is to provide as robust an education in evolution as they would be getting in a secular biology class. But then we're going to rebuild it from a biblical position. So here's a whole timeline of evolution. They can see the history of the development of evolution and then later on we'll repeat this with a timeline on the Bible's story. So educating students, helping them analyze evolution and then rebuilding it. And evolution isn't the only topic we talk about. We'll talk about drugs, we'll talk about God's plan for the family, we'll talk about biotechnology, We'll talk about diet and exercise and taking care of your body for God's glory. So these are the kinds of issues that we'll be talking about. But we're not just talking about them in the text. We're also having this, the student interact with the content and come to their own conclusions about these things. Let me show you an example of that. This is a worldview sleuthing box, and the idea is it's a web quest where students will go out, do some inter internet research, and produce some kind of product. In this one, they're going to be producing a presentation that they could present to your family or maybe at their school co-op and give the results of their research and thinking about the idea of, especially here, it's going to be geoengineering and agriculture from a biblical worldview. So we're getting students to not just hear the, the topics, but also to interact with them. So let's go to the second thing that we do, really trying to give students a sound education. At the beginning of each lesson, there's going to be an essential question, which will make the big idea really obvious to students. So we believe that learning should be a walk through the park, not a slog through the mud. And one of the ways that we can do that is to use research-based text practices. And one of those text practices is to have the pictures close with the text. Let me show you an example of that as well. This is a diagram on photosynthesis. And in some biology books, you'll read about photosynthesis for a couple pages and then see pictures of it. Here we're having the text and the pictures all together in one place. And there's numbered bullets here to direct the student through the diagram so that they can build on their information as they're interpreting the diagram. So that's one of the ways that we're using some research-based text practices. Another thing that we're doing is we're having students do case studies. So that will push them to some deeper levels of learning, really get them to think, and use the content that they've already learned in the chapter. Let me show you an example of one of those as well. This is a case study in the chapter on the respiratory and circulatory system, and it's about the basics of reading an EKG. So students will take what they learn in the chapter, They'll get, learn the basics from this case study, and then they'll answer some questions about it as well. So really trying to help develop science literacy in your children, your child who's taking this class, um, and they will also really be reaching some higher levels of learning as well. And of course, we're also having students do assessments, and one of the assessments that we're having them do, one type of the assessments, are called graphic organizers. About 60% of learners are visual. So the, these types of questions will help 
students to really be able to organize information visually. So this is an example of what we call a graphic organizer. So this is the two, the question here is the two main parts of evolution that Christians often try to reconcile with scripture are the extent of change in organisms and the timetable of change. Fill in the following table describing the different views of origins. The first row has been completed for you as an example. So again, graphic organizers is another research-based text practice. And also, the objectives that I mentioned at the beginning, those are going to be the basis for the assessments, both the section reviews, the chapter reviews, and then the tests that will follow. So we've talked about worldview shaping, we've talked about sound education, let's talk about the joy of learning. And really helping your students to get their hands on God's creation by doing hands-on science, which we really believe is the best science. We've written over 25 new labs and tested them, and we use a mix of technology. So we can use things like the petri dish to grow bacterial cultures. We can also use things like water sample testing kits so that students can go out, collect water samples, test them, and analyze their oxygen content. But we're not just using traditional pieces of biology equipment, such like, like the microscope and slides. But we're also having them use some technology. For example, this lab disk, which is probeware, where you can stick probes into this and you can measure light, you can measure humidity, you can measure temperature, pH, you can take this out into the field. And we've written some labs that use this probeware as well. And we're also, we've also looked into apps that you can download onto your phone to turn your phone into a scientific instrument, which you might not have never ever thought of your phone that way before, but you can use it that way. So let me walk you through a chapter, and so you can see how you can teach a chapter. Let's go back to chapter 10 on evolution. So the chapter opener here will be used to generate student interest, get them thinking about a story. And then at the beginning, we'll have the essential question, how does worldview affect how people think about the history of life? We'll have the key questions to make the big ideas obvious. The students can work through the content. And then there will be the section review questions at the end of the section. So you could use that before to assess their reading. You could use it after to assess their understanding of the material. And then there's also going to be labs. So, for example, in the lab manual, we'll have students in this section, we'll have them read the introduction to Darwin's On the Origin of Species and really get them thinking about the labs from a world, the worldview perspective. And then they can also bring that understanding to the chapter. And then at the end, you can have them look at the chapter review, and they can use the chapter review to help prepare for the test. So I hope you've seen how Biology 5th Edition help shape students' worldview, get a sound education, and experience the joy of learning. I hope you get your hands on Biology 5th Edition. If you'd like to, you can click on the link to look at the book, and you can flip through the first chapter yourself. Hope you'll get your hands on this book.